What is going on guys? Welcome back to C++ tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about type definitions. So let us get right into it. So type safety in C++ is actually a quite simple thing. It's not too complicated. The basic idea is you use the type def keyword. So you say type def, and then you specify a data type that already exists. So for example, something like unsigned integer, unsigned int. And now you want to use a different name for that data type. You want to create a new data type, but not, you know, not a structure, not a class, nothing too complex, just another name. Uh, for example, you could have something like H. H is uh, a type, you now want to have a separate type for H. Uh, you don't want to have just integer and then assign an H to it, you want to have H if it is an H. And the, the basic convention that you use here is always underline T. Now that's just a convention, you don't have to do it in order to get it working. You can also say my H type, and that's also a type. Um, as you can see, it's highlighted like that. This means that it is type in Visual Studio Code. And now instead of saying unsigned int value equals 10 or something, or h equals 10, we can just go ahead and say my h type h equals 10 or something like that, or let's do 20. Um, now, this is now an unsigned integer, but it's of the type my h type. Uh, and this is important for type safety. It's going to be in the signatures. If you have a function that accepts a my h type, you can still pass an integer, uh, but it's going to tell you, hey, this is actually my h type, uh, so that you know what you're passing. So it's a lot. It has a lot to do with readability. If you have um, types for h, types for size, for example, one size, uh, one one uh, type that we already have in C++ is size t. This is actually. Uh, a type definition, as you can see, it's just an unsigned integer as well, I think. Um, so you could also just use unsigned int, but it's a type that you define for size t. And this is the type used for, um, for defining the sizes of arrays, for example. Uh, but I can show you that this is actually a number. So we can print it like that. Uh, we have a problem unused I'm not printing the H, I'm printing the type. Now it works, as you can see, we get 20 as a result here. Um, and I can also do calculations with it because it's an unsigned integer, I can go ahead and add 60 to it. And it works the same way as with an integer. Now, as I said, this is not uh, how you would do it, you would not just go ahead and tell uh, and, and name it my H type, you would do something like H underline T. And the reason for that is just because it's a convention because you know, okay, this is a custom type that I defined, it's not a class, it's not a structure, it's just a type definition. And you can see actually that Visual Studio Code recognizes, uh, recognizes that convention, because even if you write some nonsense here, and then you follow it up with a underline T, it's going to highlight it as uh, a type. So if I do hello T, it's going to be marked as a type, it's going to be highlighted. If I just do something like that, it's not uh, noticed as a type. But if I use something like that underline T, we get the syntax highlighting of a type at least for a second. Uh, of course, this does not work, you, you don't have a new type just because you do underline T, but that's the convention. And Visual Studio Code assumes that this is automatically a type. So this is how you define a basic type in C++. Now let's look at a concrete example here, we want to have a data type called byte, so byte like that. And it shall only allocate one byte of memory, and we want to do calculations with it. Now, of course, we already have data types that only allocate one byte, or eight bits, but uh, those are characters and boolean. And uh, we also have another one. But essentially, those are not what we're looking for, because we don't want to deal with bytes in terms of calculations and call them characters, because you want to know, okay, is this now a character? Shall I treat it like a character? Or is this a byte? And do I want to do calculations with it, for example? Uh, and for this, we can say, for example, type def unsigned character byte, and now we have a byte uh, type definition here. And I can go ahead and say byte b equals 70, for example, and I can go ahead and say C out B and line like that. And the problem that you get here is that it's treated like a character because it is a character. Um, 
and you can counteract it by just saying unsigned. And even if that's maybe not the most clean solution, maybe not the best solution, it works and you can use it like that. So you can say byte B and it's still better to know that you have to do this because if you just call it character B equals 70, we don't know, okay, should I do this unsigned here or should I actually treat it like a character? So using byte as a type is helpful here, helpful here just because of the name byte because the programmer knows, okay, this is actually a byte and I probably wanna treat it as a number here. Um, now, the interesting thing is that if I have a second byte here, let's say I have b2 equals 20, um, and now I don't use this unsigned here, but I just say b plus b2, I will get a numerical result because I can calculate the sum of those and then it's treated as a number. Uh, whereas if I have this directly stored into a third byte, so let's say byte b3 equals b plus b2, and then I go ahead and print b3, Oh, not B2, sorry, B3. We're going to get a character again because it sees this thing as a character. It takes, uh, it takes up eight bits, therefore print it as a character. Um, now we can see that if we go ahead and say, see out size of B, any B actually, B3 for example, we're going to see that we only allocate one byte or actually one character unit, obviously, since this is by definition a character. Um, but we also have a different uh, way to do this. For example, we can use another type definition here. We can say something like type def int, uh, or actually let me look what it's called, uint, uint eight, on the line t, eight means eight bit, so one byte, and I can call this my byte here. Um, I'm not sure if that even works because this in and of itself is a type definition. As you can see, this in and of itself is an unsigned character. So, you know, I could do that, but it's in fact the same thing that we did up here. This is one way to do it. And if you want a fancy way to actually have a type for a bit set, for an 8-bit bit, bit set, uh, you could go ahead and say type def. Uh, and for this, I think we need to include a bunch of libraries here. We need to include, and this is this is just fancy shit. You don't need to do that. Uh, this is just to show you that it works. Um, we have bits and std c plus plus h, and then include std int h like that. Um, and then we say std bit set, so we can define a bit set of size eight. And this is the byte type, for example. And now I can go ahead and just say uh, byte type uh, MB for my byte equals 100. And we can then go ahead and say C out MB and line like that. And if it compiles, we get this in a binary representation. So if you actually want to use this as a real byte represented as, uh, as a binary number, we can do it like that. Uh, we can also try to see what happens. I don't think that it's going to make any difference here. Maybe it's going to crash everything if I do unsigned. But yeah, it's not going to work. Uh, but that's how you can also define a bit set if you want as an extra type, byte type, or you could say one byte. Uh, bit set, but I think in fact that this is not even true because if I do size of MB, we're probably going to see that it allocates eight bytes in fact. So maybe this is not even a candidate for that. Uh, yeah, no, it, it at least allocates four bytes. So uh, this is not what we're looking for. Character is probably the best solution here. So if you want to define your own byte data type, you're going to use an unsigned character. And if you want to print it as a number, you're going to have to deal with unsigned as a function, so to say. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.